Hi, I'm Curtis Thompson. Welcome to 320 Workshops. Today's project is this mirror. Several years ago, my wife and I bought a dresser and we negotiated this mirror along with it. Just got done refinishing her dresser, so now the mirror needs a little bit of freshening up. It's got a walnut burl around the edge that needs to be brightened up a little bit, and it's got some repairs needed to be done on the beading around it. So stick around, let's see how we do this. First, I want to get this mirror out of the frame so nothing happens to it. So I'll get it out and I'll put it over to the side where it's safe and sound and while we work on the frame. The parts from the inside, because my intention is to replace all those back just the way it was, except for the wire. Now I'm going to begin cleaning the frame off and as you can see I'm using a degreaser that is actually really bringing the color out a lot. Um, it's not going to need near as much work as I thought because it is cleaning up very nicely. Now to repair the beading. Um, it's just a thin piece of walnut. And first I'm gonna scrape off the glue and any residual underneath where the beading is going to fit. And then I'm using a chisel to cut off the ends of what's there off nice and flush. I'm using this big chisel because the back is very um, shiny and mirror-like so I can see the bead in it and by lining up the bead in the reflection I can cut an exact 90 degree with it. Now I have a piece of thin walnut that was a scrap from another project and I'm going to take it and I'm going to plane it down with um, a small block plane and I'm kind of curving over. I'm forming that bead with just uh, a small plane, basically making small facets and then making this facet smaller and smaller until I sand it to a nice smooth round bead. This may be a little better shot of how I'm kind of changing the angle to get those facets. It may not be exact, but neither is the beading on the uh, frame. I found that some areas were a little wider than others and I had to compensate that with um, the plane. So because it wasn't perfect, it probably fit better. Now I'm gonna get up using my square as kind of a depth gauge and getting the thickness of how thick that bead needs to be. And once I've cut that thin, I'm using the sandpaper to kind of get the, the edges smooth. And you can see with a smaller piece, a lot of times it's easier to move the piece across the sandpaper than it is to move the sandpaper across the piece. Now to fit that piece in, bring my little sawing block over. Here again, I'm going to use the chisel where I can to get that 90 degree mark. Now, actually I'm able to trim that one off. Now you'll see on this next one, I can't really get it trimmed off with the chisel so I'm going to use a little razor saw to kind of finish off the cut. And a nice fit there. Now we'll do the same thing with the corner. And again, you can use that chisel to cut those 90 or 45 degree angles by making the reflection appear to be a 90 degree. 
can almost see it there in that chisel. Again, I'm getting my angle cut. That's actually for the, the far corner. Now I'm gonna cut this this one. You can see where I'm trimming up the side, because like I said, that side was or that section of the beading was a little bit narrower than the rest. Now, once I've got them all cut, I'm going to glue them down into place using some tape to hold them while the glue dries. And I'm using the dark wood type on glue. Now once the glue's dried, I'll remove the tape and begin to start getting it all finished up. A little bit of trimming needs to be done there. I'm using a little sanding stick that I got off of Amazon. They're just different grits and they're little sticks like that. Very easy to get into small areas. A little bit of putty and I was able to finish it off pretty well. I did kind of round the corner to make it look a little more like the other corners. Um, and then I'm matching it with a little bit of stain. Sometimes it's a process to get the, the, to match. I'm applying some stain there. And now I'm gonna tape those off and use a little bit of toner spray to kind of change the color a little bit. It needed a little more red to it. And the frame had two holes on the sides of it. It appears like it had maybe started life as part of a dresser. So we're gonna fill those holes in with some plugs. Here's the problem, how do I drill that in there? I have a solution. What I'm gonna do, is like here, I can't just put in there and just gonna dig it all up. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take this, this bit over to the drill press. I'm going to drill a hole in a piece of wood. I'll just use this that I've already used. This is the, uh, plug cutter that I cut those with. So what I'll do here, I'm gonna we'll cut a hole through this to be a guide. Now, I'm gonna mount this on top. This can be my guide. Fit right in there, and then that'll go right down in that hole just the way it's supposed to. All right, so looking down in there, I think we got it. There we go, that's better. I'm gonna come back this way because I think I can get better grip on this end, like that. Thank you. 
that one right there that'll work good once all the repairs are completed now I'm going to add a little bit of stain I'm just using a very light finish uh, of stain on it just to make all the colors blend in well I did scuff the surface so everything would uh, stick well. And now I'm applying a shellac. I'm only going to do one or two coats of this one here, just to kind of light coats. And then once the shellac is completed and dried, I'm going to put a bit of Gilboy's uh, wax finish on it so that I can get a nice buffed shine to it. Now I get the mirror cleaned off and being an old mirror it's not perfect and it still has some streaks and stains in it that are probably on the underside, but it kind of gives it the character that you look for in an old mirror. Now I'm going to reassemble the piece, putting all the pieces back in the same as they were. Even though it's kind of patched together, I'm going to replace it just the same. I did clean up the screws and some of vapor rust, so they're in. You know, there's no rust or dirt on those. Put the screw eyes back in and I'm going to use some new wire to support it. And that's about it. That turned out to be a pretty simple project. A good clean brought out the beauty of the burl veneer. Um, the one thing I will say on the side, the plugs I put in, they didn't hide it completely. But one thing I do like to do when I have to make a repair like that, I at least like to make it look like it was done a long time ago. Kind of adds to the character of the piece. All in all, I'm really pretty satisfied. Thanks for stopping by.